So as we go through, make sure you take a moment just to stop in this kind of little area. Look through the glass behind the walls here. You'll see that kind of closes the engineering. Make sure you get your pictures, take a good look. We will not be going back through this area after the tour. Does anybody have any questions before we go through? here, these kind of home-like structures, these are what's called the PFVs. This stands for Private Family Visitation Units. Conjugal visitations were introduced into Canadian federal penitentiaries in the 1980s, but were these um, kind of apartments themselves were built in 1997, so a bit more of a recent addition here at Kingston Pen. Any inmates in the prison could technically um, apply or try to qualify to spend time in one of these furnished units for up to 72 hours every two months but they had to meet kind of two simple criteria. The first is they had to prove the relationship. So it either had to be an immediate family member, such as a child, children, or parents, or a spouse, so a common law partner or a wife. The second criteria is they had to have no history of family violence or abuse. They kind of met those two simple criteria. They could find themselves in one of these furnished units. They have a kind of like a living room, a bedroom, a kitchen. They may able to make their own meals with their family members. You could also imagine kiddie pools out on the front to keep family friendly kind of setting as there could be children out here kind of reconnecting with their fathers. But also to help an inmate rehabilitation, to help them upkeep and maintain their family relationships. Uh, interesting to note there's no security features per se um, within the walls, so no video cameras, no staff members. However, there is an emergency telephone so that if the family member wanted to leave for any reason, they could just call out on this phone and a staff member could come and retrieve. Some significance here. Um, uh, you've probably heard some of what I'm going to say, but originally the, um, the original fence was a 12-foot cedar plank fence. So as this was being built, the stone wall was being built around the place. So the main gate actually ties together the exterior perimeter, the secure perimeter of the jail. That being the gate, the walls, the towers, the walls down the side, the wall across the back. There also was another gate over on the west wall originally. It was a little bit smaller than this but similarly constructed. So the building around the gate is also uh, part of the, of the lodge itself. Uh, the left-hand part over here was the original visiting area for inmate visitors, and the lower part were offices. 
side on, over here was the staff training area, offices, a passageway, and the lower part was the armory for the institution. The armories had all the keys, locks, uh, restraint equipment, weapons, and ammunition. And there's actually a tunnel that goes from the main armory down under the dome, where there's a sub-armory that you'll see when you go into the dome. Um, and then the gate itself was for all vehicle and pedestrian traffic that came through here. The gate that was on the west side, I'm going to have to all move over just a little bit to let the outgoing tour group by. Um, the gate on the, that was on the west wall was similar right. to this, had buildings around it as well, a little bit smaller. But the building around the uh, gate on the rest, uh, le, uh, west wall were apartments. And so staff could actually live inside KDP uh, if they got a, won the lottery that let them rent these apartments. And they were quite big. Um, so, and the west uh, gate was only used for ship deliveries. You know, it was Hatter's Bay right there, so if they were bringing in coal or food or other deliveries, they would use that gate. It was uh, torn down in 1926, and a vehicle entrance was placed on the south wall. This one, however, was all vehicle and pedestrian traffic, um, and remained vehicle traffic up until about the 70s. And uh, very secure. The first vehicles that came through here were oxen pole wagons that brought rock up from the quarry because inmate gangs went out and blasted rock and loaded it onto wagons in the quarry. They'd be hauled in here, went around into the back where there was a rock yard. They were unloaded there and inmates actually shaped and cut the rocks and then the inmate, other inmate gangs were used to help build. Inmate labor built all of, uh, most of uh, KP, all of prison for women and the Church of the Good Thief, aptly named in, um, in Portsmouth Village and a number of other limestone structures around here. So the, the uh, gate itself is very secure. Uh, to come in, either in vehicle or by a pedestrian, it wasn't open like it is now for the tours. You would come in and a, a gate would lock behind you, or come in the door and the door would lock behind you. Then you would go through a security procedure or the vehicle would be checked for uh, security breaches. And then and only then would the inside door be open to allow you to come in. The concept was you wouldn't have the outer door and the inner door open at the same time because it was an escape risk and we were very proud of the secure corner. That being said, there was an escape here. And uh, it ended tragically, but it was 1948, there was an officer named uh, John Kennedy, who was a uh, messenger guard, and he was going out uh, with the messenger vehicle, you know, a regular routine day, but there were two inmates that worked up in that area, um, one named Croft and one named Urquhart, and they overpowered Officer Kennedy and the main gate guard, um, took their weapons, took their keys, they got the outer gate open, stole the vehicle, and did escape, but there was an exchange of gunfire in the process, and Officer Kennedy was shot and killed. The two got away, but were apprehended 48 hours later. Uh, they were brought back, uh, charged, tried, and convicted, and sentenced to hang. Now, Officer Kennedy has an interesting story. Uh, his father was an officer here before him, and his family lived in one of the apartments on the West Gate. Uh, John Kennedy was born in KP. And he worked his entire life uh, in KP, and he died in the of KP during that escape. He was one of seven uh, staff over the 178 years who actually died while on duty in KP. One was um, uh, an industrial accident, one was a um, farming accident, and the other five were at the hands of the farm. So the other interesting thing, if we move down a bit, under the dome there's a white bell tower. And the bell, uh, the tower itself was built in 1896 and the bell was raised into it, but the bell actually uh, was in existence and used right from the beginning of the uh, operation of the institution. Uh, and what it was used for was, if you worked here, you had to live within the sound of the bell. So if there was a problem or an emergency, they'd ring the bell and whenever that happened, you would get up, put on your uniform and report to work. The other times that it rang was to open and close the business day. And the reason for that was inmates worked outside, so they ring the bell to open the, gate, the, the business day. That would tell the community that inmates were coming out in work gangs to work in the quarry or to work on the farm, um, and everybody would know they were out. When it rang at the close of the business day, it meant everybody was back in and accounted for, and it told the community that was the case, and it also told the day staff that they could go home. So that's pretty much the story of the main gate. Do you have any questions before you continue on your tour? Nope. All right. Well, it gets cooler as you get inside, folks. So it's uh, and it's kind. It's really interesting when you get inside. You're getting into the real guts and glory here. So have a great tour. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay.
five tier or five stories of cells down to the four that you'll see today when we go in. Definitely bigger and upgrade, but still they're not massive. You'll, you'll see when you go in. The main gate to the prison actually used to be right in the middle of this north facing cell block here. It's about 10 years later when they built the main gate. Over here to our left, over here, these shorter structures, these are the segregation cells or the segregation ranges. Newly renovated in 2002. You'll kind of see when we go in, state of the art. And uh, it was actually built upon the original prison for women here at Kingston 10. To your far left over there was the hospital. And I will be ta talking about the hospital a little later on in the tour. So if you don't mind just following me down here, we're going to get a good view of this building over here. So this building um, was actually the first freestanding prison for women. So I mentioned just previously that the prison for women used to be where the segregation cells are today. However, they couldn't have this set up for very long here at KP because the women were attached on to the main cell block where all of the men were, so they couldn't have the two intermingling, kind of crossing paths, running into one another. Thus, they had to create the freestanding prison for women over here. Uh, so the, the women had more freedom of movement over here and just had their own kind of space. As you can see on the main floor there, there are bars over the windows. And that is because uh, the cells would have been there, the women's cells. And then the upper two floors actually have no bars over the windows. And that's because the matron and the deputy matron so the women who ran the prison for women actually had their own staff apartments on those floors in the days when the women were here on site. So they all were kind of under the roof, uh, under the same roof at one time. The warden's office eventually moved into this building because after 1934, the prison for women moved across <coughs> the street to a larger facility. And uh, it basically just became administration space in here and it made more sense to have the warden inside the walls close by um, as opposed to across the street at the Penitentiary Museum, what is now the Penitentiary Penitentiary Museum used to be the original warden's residence or warden's office. Any questions? Okay, we're gonna continue down here. broadcasting office was located in here. Also the first segregation or dissociation cells could be found in the basement of this keeper's hall. Essentially the jail within the jail where you go if you've been a bad boy in prison and you need some punishment. On the second level of this services floor actually had the original school and the original chapel and on the bottom floor was the inmate dining hall. So in the early days inmates had to eat together in complete and utter silence but over time that changed and it basically kind of became cafeteria style. So the inmates go out to a kitchen, grab a tray, and eat some kind of locked into their own individual cells. Unfortunately, in the 1971 riot, which was the worst and most volatile riot that ever happened here at Kingston Pen, the inmates gained access to that second floor there and did extensive damage and destruction to both the school and the chapel. So much so that they actually had to be relocated to other um, sites on the property here, which I will point out as the
you can just come right in. There's lots of space here. Come right in. All right in, folks. There's lots of space for all your pictures. How much? How much? I didn't hear you. Be quiet. So folks, we have Vern here, a ten the retired staff member. He, he's going to tell us a little bit about the wing and cells area. Oh, well, if you folks wanna just want to move in, in this way, we're going to have another tour that's going to get around behind it. They're going to the hole. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the name is Vern Thibodeau, retired correctional officer. I uh, worked 20, 26 years. <laughs> My last 18 years as a correctional supervisor, which is very high up the ladder. Uh, Joyce Bill, management here, phoned me and asked me if I transferred to TV, and I did. So I was here for nine to ten years, and then I phoned Mill Haven and went back to Mill Haven. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you a little about KT and the routine here. It doesn't take too long, you have time to touch on the line. Uh, KT, when I was here, Control center wasn't here. All the wires and that new stuff was here. We had one from the floor to the first ceiling. We had a wire case and all the way around. And an armed officer used to be up there, patrol around. Uh, staff had to downgrade the keys and unlock the cells and relock them. We put this up here. In our arm control center. We control all the cells in here. Turn a button and slide over the range barrier, push a button and unlock one cell and you can unlock the whole range of the fire. And there are uh, two rifles in here, two officers who have two rifles and two handguns on them. And it was a backup arm. So there's the shotguns in here, that's your rifle, gas, 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 shield, all kinds of stuff. Of course, two doors. Um, one rule in, in these control centers, any prison, one door unlocked and open at a time only. And, and that's a standing, extremely strict rule. Being a supervisor, if I came down here and when this door was open and the guy in there said, you know, that other door, I'd send him home. And he wouldn't be fired, but he'd be home and he'd be the off and Very serious, but the weapon is on the getting weapons is not good idea. Anyway, uh, I'll uh, we go through all the changing routine stages. I'll keep going, going, going down there, and I'll uh, pick Grass's first meal of the day. So it does, like I say, it doesn't matter if it's uh, meal time, work time, weekend, going to the yard, the gym, and that. Done the same way. Okay. Uh, Morning, the cells are all locked, the rain barriers are closed, breakfast time, or almost breakfast time. The kitchen would notify the staff that the breakfast meal is ready. So, uh, and there's an officer assigned to each each range. So the officer, the G range would go over, the first range would go to each, would go over, he'd holler, jug up, just telling the inmate that we're going to unlock, it's time to eat. He'd wave to the controls. Back in my day, he'd go down with the key and unlock. But now he waves at the control. The guy turns the button to slide the barrier over and hit the button to unlock all the cells on one and two keys. You have to remember, when you're down the range, you'll see two tiers of cells down there in the ceiling. And you got to remember, there's two tiers above that in the ceiling. And then two tiers above that in the ceiling. So there's just three or four tiers that you can see before. So a lot of cells in there. Anyway, and, and a lot of feeding. You probably have maybe four or five hundred inmates you got to feed. Um, so, anyway, he pushes the button, the doors open up, the inmate from one to two feet file out to get the, get the meal. Uh, and it's not really filing, like they don't have to go through single file as many times to try to get the meal to move. They come out, they're talking, they're laughing with their buddies, talking to each other, and joking. They go down and they put this down after the so they walk down there, grab a tray, go along, they say they can't see your cell, and get the meal, come back, go back into the cell, sit down, and make the same PET in the, in the cell. 
Uh, once the knee range, once the tail end of knee range is down in this area somewhere, they'd open up about on the opposite side and start a range there. You know, same thing. Once they're all back in and eating, they're done eating, we'd uh, have work about the uh, weekday, we'd have work about the uh, weekend, we'd have yard work. Uh, the officer would go over there and yell, uh, work up, and uh, they'd open the wave here, and they'd open the barrier, so they'd file out to go to work. And most of the work they make work down in the shop room. You get down there later, you sort of be amazed at that place. It's really something. Anyway, most are down there. Some would be working in the gym and recreation. Some would be out in the yard, cleaning the yard. And once they're all out, everything's locked up again. And the only inmates loose in this whole area, like no inmate congregated in this area at any time. It doesn't matter what day of the week it is, or what day it is, or what time, nobody congregated. But the, uh, you'd have two, maybe three inmates here, the cleaners, the clean cell cleaners. And one inmate on each range, his job would be to clean the range, and mop, and dust, and fix the coffee pot. And mind you, didn't work too hard, to be honest. That was what they got paid for. The only inmates in their cells would be uh, if an inmate uh, was excused work from uh, a medical a doctor who doesn't have to work, he'd be in his cell. An inmate that uh, his shop is closed for whatever reason, or the school teacher didn't see his name was sick, they'd be left in their cell. Those two would get, uh, still get their regular pay, whatever the daily rate was. And the other inmate in the cell would be locked in the cell as uh, none workers. Like if an inmate comes in and what, goes through the steps there and says, screw you, I'm not working. Well, you can't make him work, you can't. You've still got to feed them and everything. So he has to be locked, he'd be locked in the cell, watching TV and reading his book or sleeping, whatever, having a good time. But he'd be on bottom plate. And uh, time for rides. Okay, I'll just do a quick one. Okay, KP had three rides. Uh, the main one and the last one was 1971. Uh, it was a bad one. Uh, no Haven institution was being built. They thought they were going to end up something there. The ride was just a thick off the crossing. Didn't hurt them physically. Uh, put them away in the inmates' boat. And the fourth day, they broke into the segregated range. Dragged uh, 14 inmates. They gave up anyway. Their staff was getting ready to blow those three holes in the area that stormed in. They gave up. One inmate died and was tied to his chair. Another one was taken to the hospital downtown. He died down there. And they settled it down. Well, you can see the damage they did. You got a few pictures hanging around. They did a lot of damage. But they rebuilt it, made it a protective custody institution. And KP was back to KP. <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> Good old KP. <laughs> yes, sir. Oh, go ahead. How did they figure out who worked where? Who the inmates? Oh, they go to a work board. Uh, every new inmate went through a work board, a committee of uh, staff, and went in the office of the work board and they said what their background was, or they preferred whatever. If there's no thing they went to. They were interested in school, they would sign them to school. Sort of a bit on our side, a bit on their side. Tried to, if they wanted a place, we tried to fit in. Yes, sir. Uh, you mentioned a basic pay for those who didn't work. Yeah. So, so if they chose to just sit around and do nothing, you still got a oh, daily pay? Oh, still got pay. Now, the bottom pay when I was here was a dollar a day. Top pay was six dollars a day. And the pay rate, I don't know who. I just remember school, if I went to school, it used to be five dollars a day when I was a kid, which is a few years ago now. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I guess, uh, okay. yeah. I can burn three and I sit down and yep. okay. yeah. well, we'll be down here for some of your notes as well. So the first few cells are showers, so uh, seven and eleven are furnished, so you can see what an inmate cell would look like. And the last two cells, or at the end, are open, so you can go inside of them, yeah. you know, this is card yeah. pictures, take a look around, so.